going. Um, is, so, is there any specific reason why we are so fearful of these species when they themselves are equally fearful of us? So, how do we, I mean, how do we train our mind to overcome this paranoia? And the larger question is, how do we uh, ensure a mutually sustainable habitat uh, where we do not disturb the human, the balance between the human-animal interaction? See, uh, <clears throat> there are many many questions in I don't know what's the level of interest in snakes, accordingly I will go. Hello? I have been involved with snakes from a very early age. When I say early, I like uh, caught my first snake probably when I was five, five and a half years of age. What is significant about this is, snake is one creature, if you do not know this, it's stone deaf, you know this? All snakes are stone deaf, they, they don't have hearing mechanism at all. So, it literally has ear to the ground, its entire body is to the ground feeling reverberations. To what extent means, let's say there is going to be uh, an earthquake somewhere in Central Asia. If you just observe a cobra today, let's say in the next three days there is going to be something happening, if you observe a cobra, how he behaves, you know there is going to be an earthquake. If you study it sufficiently, you can even indicate the direction in which it's going to happen and an approximate distance. Whether it's going to happen hundred kilometers away, thousand kilometers away or three thousand kilometers away, you can make an approximate guess like a meteorological science you can observe. Because he's got his entire body to the ground, even the smallest reverb that he feels, he behaves differently. So in that context, he is very perceptive. And he is also chemically very perceptive. The only way he knows you is by your chemistry. He doesn't see you very well, but he knows your chemistry very well. See, if you go, don't try this by yourself, huh? because you are on pot. <laughs> uh, you may not be quick enough for them. If you just go and pick up a cobra simply like this, not by his head or something, just in the middle, hold him, just pick him up, he will simply come without any resistance. If there is no any anxiety or anything within you, you show bit, little bit of anxiety, he will go for you because he sees it as danger immediately. So I was telling people, you know, people were saying, how do we know Sadhguru, we are really meditative and at ease? I said, we must do a cobra test for you. If you just pick it up, if he just comes, you are at ease. If he reacts, that means you are not at ease. You… I don't know, one picture came for a moment in that video where I'm holding a king cobra. You saw that one? A king cobra, I think no, not in this, it didn't come. I think a king cobra was on the ground. There's another picture where I'm holding a king cobra halfway down and he's just like that. A king cobra is a snake that if it bites you, it'll just hardly give you twenty to forty minutes, you'll die within that. A regular cobra, it, it bites you because you say they have snakes, I'm giving you some knowledge. It mainly, the cobra venom affects your cardiovascular system, it gives you anywhere between four to six hours. If you don't get excited, you may get another one or two hours extra. If it bites you in the body, you'll have four to five hours. If it bites you in the limb, you may get six to eight hours time. But if a viper bites you, you have much less time. If a banded carrot bites you, you have just one and a half to two hours. Because one venom a attack uh, affects your neurological system, another venom affects your cardiovascular system. What it is doing to you is your blood gets thicker, so you can't breathe. And everything gets tough because the heart will start pumping in a certain way because the blood gets thicker and thicker, coagulation happens across the body. Why I'm saying this to you is, the nature of the venom gives him that. Venom is not only in his sac, he's producing it in his entire body. Today, there's so much research gone into the medical sciences, you will see in the next five to ten years' time, almost all neurological ailments will be treated with cobra venom, snake venom and spider… Uh, scorpion venom and spider venom. And some sea snakes which have very special kind of venoms which could kill you in five, ten minutes. So, a lot of research has gone in, 
almost for every neurological problem that people are going through like Parkinson's and memory losses, all this they are going to treat with venom. Still it has not been approved but much research has gone in this direction. So it knows your chemistry so well. The beautiful thing about this is, there was a time when I'm sitting in some jungles in uh, the Western Ghats, you guys are on the east, but you must come to the Western Ghats, that's a real jungle, okay? <laughs> It's a rainforest. If I'm sitting and meditating, normally I don't know why, now I'm wondering why I sat in the afternoons, but I always sat in the afternoons, not early mornings. Afternoon I sit for meditation and I'm like sitting for five, six hours. When I open my eyes, a dozen snakes are sitting here. They're just drawn to that chemistry. When your chemistry changes, they just know and it comes. This is why Adiyogi is shown with a cobra on his… Uh, you know, around his neck to indicate that he is meditative, he is still within himself. If you become still within yourself, you pick up the cobra, simply it will come like that. When I lived in the jungles for by myself, no food arrangement, nothing, I mainly survived by drinking honey. Huge beehives are built at a place where the bears can't get. They calculate the bees have such intelligence, they calculate a normal sloth bear weighs how much? Approximately about sixty to seventy kilograms. They build it on a branch where if the bear comes, even if the branch doesn't break, the branch will be sufficiently disturbed for them to go and take care of him. So it is up there and I slowly crawl up. I… Uh, my motorcycle petrol tube, I always keep it extra long, about eighteen inches. And I go with this tube, stick the tube and drink honey three and a quarter liters to one liter honey, if I drink for one or two days, I am fully fired up with food, enough calorie in my system. But when I am drinking this honey, the bees think I am one more big bee, they don't see me. They are looking at the chemistry. If little agitation, if you saw, show, they will come for you. In your face, if eight, ten bees bite, you will die of suffocation. In fear, if you open your mouth, if they bite inside, one will do. Just one bee, if it bites you inside your mouth, you will suffocate to death. And above all, you will fall down from the tree, okay <laughs> So, we can give you a cobra test or we can send people from our yoga center who will train you how to handle… Suppose a snake came in, inside, how to take him and leave him in his habitat? He's come here not because he want to listen to the lecture or the conversation or the air conditioning, he's not come for anything that you have come for. By mistake, he's entered. You just have to let him back there. For this, little bit beyond fear you must be to take it, but without training if you take it, you could endanger your own life. So if you want, we can train fifteen, twenty people on the campus who can handle this safely. So,